In this video, we're going to look at combining parallel and series connected capacitors and inductors into single equivalent capacitances and inductances. To do so, let's start looking at this series connection of three capacitors, C1, C2, and C3. Recall that in a capacitor or a cross capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor is equal to 1 over C times the integral of the current with respect to time. Because they're connected in series, we can write a KVL loop in terms of the current by, by uh, simply summing the voltage drops across each of these. And when we do that, we get then the total voltage drop across them, V sub S, is equal to 1 over C1 times the integral of I of T dt plus 1 over C2 times the integral of I of T dt plus 1 over C3 times the integral of I of T dt. Now, in our equivalent circuit, that same voltage is dropped across an equivalent capacitance, and here we can say then that V sub S, the voltage across the capacitor, is equal to 1 over CEQ times the integral of I of T dt. Now this is the same current here as here. That's our definition of, of equivalence. So we can then take this V sub S here and this V sub S here, or the expressions for those two, and set them equal to each other, and we get then that 1 over CEQ times the integral of I of T dt is equal to this expression right here. And let's factor out the uh, integral term because it's the integral of the same current. So that's equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. That's sum times the integral of I of t dt. Now again, because the current's the same, the integrals will be the same, we can cancel. And we see then that 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. That's what we're looking for. The equivalent combination of three or of capacitors connected in series can be found by the inverse of the equivalent capacitance is equal to the inverse of each of the sum of the inverses of each of the capacitances. You'll notice that mathematically, series capacitors combine in the same way that parallel resistances combined. Now let's do a similar um, derivation for parallel capacitances. In this, we need to recall that the current in the capacitor is equal to C times dV dt. So we can write a KCL equation for this top circuit. And we have I sub S coming in, so I sub S will equal the current through C1 plus the current through C2 plus the current through C3, which is um, C1 dV dt plus C2 dV dt plus C3 dV dt. And again, because they're in parallel, the voltage is the same across the, all of them. Again, that's the definition of parallel. Now, for the second circuit here, we can say that the current through the capacitor is going to be I sub S. And in this equivalent circuit, that will be CEQ times dV dt. Now, we'll equate these two expressions for I sub S. And we get then that CEQ dV dt is equal to C1. And let's factor out the dV dt. It's a common term. They're the same term. So we C1 plus C2 plus C3 times dV dt. And once again, because the voltages are the same in both of these circuits, we can cancel those. And we're left with the equivalent capacitance of these parallel capacitors is C1 plus C2 plus C3. You can think of these in terms of what capacitors really are. They're parallel. A capacitor is a parallel, or can be thought of as two parallel plates. 
and the capacitance is proportional to the area. So if you have two parallel plates and the areas associated with those two parallel plates in parallel with two more parallel plates in parallel with two more parallel plates, you can think of just the area of each of those adding and thus when capacitors are connected in parallel their capacitances add. You'll notice that mathematically this combination here for the parallel capacitors is the same mathematical is of the same mathematical form as series connected resistors. Now let's do a similar analysis for parallel and series connected inductors. Again in series we're going to want to write a loop around this or a KVL equation around this closed loop and in order to, in order to do that we need to remember that the voltage across the inductor V is equal to L di dt. So a KVL around that top loop gives us that V sub S is equal to L1 di dt plus L2 di dt plus L3 di dt. And similarly around the equivalent circuit, this will be the equivalent inductance there, we have then that V sub S is equal to L E Q di dt. When we equate those two expressions for V sub S, we get then that L E Q di dt is equal to L1. And let's factor out the di dt because it's the common term in each of those. We have then L1 plus L2 plus L3 times di dt, or the equivalent inductance of capacitor or the inductors connected in series is equal to simply L1 plus L2 plus L3. You'll notice for an inductor, the series combination of inductors, the math is the same as for a series combination of resistors. And we can think of that in terms of an inductor being just a coil, and that the inductance of the coil is proportional to the number of turns. So, if we have one inductor with n terms, followed by another inductor with another n terms, and another inductor with n terms, or n1 terms, and n2 terms, and n3 terms, we can simply think of adding up the terms, turns and combining them all into one. And that's what that expression right there is saying. Now, let's look at the parallel combination inductances, and to do so here, we need to recall that the current in an inductor is equal to 1 over L times the integral of the current of the voltage with respect to T. And because they're in parallel, they have the same voltage across them, and we're going to write a node equation at that node. When we do so, we get then that the current coming into the node, I sub S, is equal to 1 over L1 times the integral V of T dT plus 1 over L2 times the integral of V of T dt plus 1 over L3 times the integral of V of T dt. Similarly, in our circuit here, where we have the equivalent of the parallel combination, we're going to have then the current here I sub S is equal to 1 over L E Q times the integral of that same voltage V of T dT. Equating those two expressions for I sub S and factoring the integral term out of this expression, we have then that 1 over L E Q times the integral V of T dT is equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3 times the integral of V of T dT. These two integral terms are equivalent, thus 1 over L E Q is equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3 for a parallel con combination of inductances. And again, 
we'll notice that the uh, math for the equivalent parallel inductances is the same as the math for the parallel connected, connected resistances.